Alright guys, how's it going? So I'm very excited to actually share this add-on with you. And you know me, I don't get excited. <laughs> this is called the Serpent's Visual Scripting Add-on. Now the best way I can describe it is it lets you actually create a Blender add-on using nodes. Yep, you heard me right, using nodes. And it's actually pretty damn phenomenal to be honest. Now that is pretty damn high praise, especially coming from me. And I'll be completely honest, I'm actually inside of the Discord group. But this really is a game changer. And it actually comes from a very high pedigree of developer, so I can actually see this kicking off big time. Now I'm not going to show you how to install the add-on, but there's one thing I would like to cover in the preferences. As you can see here, your packages. So that's the add-ons that you create. But the thing that really intrigued me was the marketplace. Maybe this is an assumption, but I'm hoping because there's going to be so many add-ons created that they actually have this kind of marketplace or an ecosystem. So that means more Blender add-ons for everybody. And to me, that is a positive. Now it's very easy to use visual scripting add-ons, but it is an absolute beast of an application. So what I'll do here is I'll just quickly drag up the timeline and I'll change the editor type and I'll change this to visual scripting. Now when you first start the application, it actually gives you this really nice tutorial and it walks you through the application. And that's the very first time I've seen something like that done in Blender. And it's pretty cool to be honest. Now, if you go up here you can choose an example and it'll show you how to create a layout button, an operator, a variable. It's pretty much there for the taking. Now one thing I'll say is the documentation needs a little bit of work, but this is very early days. So let's quickly create our own Blender add-on. Now one thing I'll say is, please do not think for one second this is all the application is capable of. I'm a simple man, so I'm going to make a simple add-on. <laughs> so I'll click on new here. And it'll actually give you a kind of basic setup. Now one thing I'm going to do is, I'm just going to quickly delete all of this. And I'll walk you through some of the things. So let's zoom in a little bit, and let's press Shift and A to bring up the nodes. I'll press S to search, and the first thing that I really need is a panel. I need to tell Blender's UI where I would like to put this add-on. I might need a button somewhere, so I'll search for panel, and rather than adding to a panel, I'll create a new panel. So you can see here, I have a selection tool, and when I click on it, I'll highlight in red where I can actually put a button, or where I can actually interact with the UI. So let's say, for example, I'll put it in the toolbox. That's good enough for me. It'll give you an indication, view 3D tools. Let's give it a label and let's call this my search bar. Now there is a few options. Do you want to hide the header? We'll leave it on default at the moment. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press Shift and A again and search. And obviously I need a button. I've got a panel, now I need a button. So I'll search for button. And let's quickly give it an icon. And we'll just pick something random. So Suzanne will do for the now. And you can see here text, so I'm going to give the button a text label, and we'll just call this search. And it's always advisable to give it a description, so this means when you hover over a button, the user gets an indication of what it does. So I'll just write in search bar. What I'm going to do here is, I'm going to take the header and I'll pipe this into the layout. So the next thing I really need is an operator or a function, something that we can tell Blender to actually do. So I'll press Shift and A again, and I'll search for an operator and I'll choose the run operator. Now we can use the internal functions or we can use our own custom function. I'll take execute and I'll plug this into execute and I'll just use Blender's internal function and if I click here and you'll notice that it pretty much brings up anything that Blender API can actually call. So we can add things like a brush, we can add objects, we can do a whole bunch of things and these can actually be strung together but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to look for search Search menu, WM, and that's it. I've created my very first add-on. How easy is that? The next thing I need to do is compile the add-on. And if you take a look on the left-hand side, when I hit OK, I now have a search bar, and I now have my button called Search. And when I click it, it brings up the search menu. How clever is this? So what I'm going to do here before I show you how to export out the add-on so you can share it with your friends or whoever, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the nodes. So I'll go to add. So you have execute. So you can execute things like append from a file, create an operator, run an operator, run a script, 
pretty much fully fledged. Now, the developer is constantly tweaking this application, so there'll be bug fixes in the next couple of days, there might be new features, but it's looking good. In terms of inputs, you have a boolean, you have a string, you have a vector, so you're pretty much covered as well. And this goes along for the interface. So maybe you want to add to a panel, create a button, you want to display a colour, you want to create a row, you want a separator, you're pretty much covered. When it comes to logic, this is where you can go right down the rabbit hole. And this kind of echoes for variables. And obviously you've got organise and this is frame and I need to check this out. But I want to export my script, very easy, I can go to visual scripting. So what I can do here is I can put in the name of the add-on, the author, the description, location, all the basic things that you would actually expect for a Blender add-on. And I can also control the Blender version number, very handy. And then the next thing you need to do is go to export and export out the add-on. And that is you, you're now an add-on developer. <laughs> So this is a very primitive example how to create an add-on and I'm hoping over the next few weeks I can go a little bit more deeper. This is a pretty damn new application, do I recommend it as a product? Of course I do. Do me a favour guys, support third party developers, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, support me on Gumroad, you know what to do. Take care.